here's a fact for you. Did you know that the average person has about five dreams per night or 1,825 dreams per year? Yet in every single one of mine, I'm still me. But that's a good thing for you because my name is Andrew Rhodes and I'd like to welcome you to the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast for Saturday, May 6th, 2017. Wow! We've hit May, folks! That's great. Yeah, today was a free comic book day. Really fun. Uh, I actually got to enjoy it for the first time in, oh god, years. And I mean that. Though it would have been nice if somebody out there would have told me, hey, you can get like two comics for free, but then you gotta pay for any other ones. Uh, would have been a good heads up, then I may not have wanted to do it, but still would have been a nice heads up. But anyway, I'm fine with it. I got a Dragon Ball Super comic, a Doctor Who comic, a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic, a The Tick comic, Wonder Woman, and a couple others. Uh, oh, Attack on Titan, and oh, Legend of Zelda, that's what it was. That's all the comics that I got on free comic book day. I got seven total. That's great. I got seven comic books on free comic book day. That's the way to do it. Which nerd a palooza in there. But let's see what I'm going to be talking about this week. What am I talking about on the podcast this week? Well, a Pixar director has confirmed a dark fan theory. Now, I'm not going to say what movie it is until I get into it. But let's just say that it involves something that we all take for granted on a daily basis. And it's a movie that literally creeped me the hell out. The sequel sucked. And they're making a third one. Yay! <laughs> Hayao Miyazaki's Borrow the Caterpillar short film... Uh, will premiere in July, and a separate full-length feature will premiere sometime after 2019, which means he can push off his retirement again. That's a good thing for you, but you've been retiring since probably before I was born. I wouldn't doubt it. An anime director has detailed the low-wage woes. Yep, this one's sad, and I have talked about it before, but I'm just going to go into it off of what they said. It's really, really bad. Um, the Hokua anime cast, the dub cast, that's right, remember, I talked about this a couple weeks ago, I'm psyched about it, the dub cast has been previewed in a trailer, and I can't wait to tell you about it, so, without further ado, let's get into the podcast, you know the drill though, like always, A-Roads 2012 on eBay, if you're looking for trading cards, I do have comics, and they are getting up sometime this week, I actually have the pictures of them, I'm working on getting them up. It's just a matter of fitting it into my schedule, which has now gotten to be a bit hectic. But uh, A Roads 2012 on eBay. It's A R H O A D S hyphen 2012. You can also follow me on Twitter at Otaku Roads. So there you go. Um, this week, massive, massive hectic week I had, folks. Massive, massive hectic week. Um, I had to work until 12 o'clock. Uh, which is out of the norm uh, for many things. My one coworker made the comment, oh, you're just out of your comfort zone. You're out of your element. Yeah, I was. I can safely say that I kind of was. When I'm suddenly remembering the training DVD and I'm greeting customers, and I'm not used to that. Uh, <laughs> I'm not used to that at all. I'm used to stocking shelves at 5 in the morning. I'm used to stocking the shelves till 10 in the morning. Staying till 12, uh, not exactly something I'm used to. Uh, this week, though, I found out uh, late, earlier today that I get to enjoy that lovely feel again next week till about 12.30 this time. So we're going up an extra half an hour. <laughs> That's just going to be great. You know it? That's going to be great. Uh, but, yeah, so... Well, that's kind of fun. We did have a little bit of a problem, though, yesterday. It kind of really brought me to my breaking point mentally. Uh, but I guess I can put it behind me for now. I'm hoping it doesn't happen again. Really am. I don't want to go into it here. It's a private thing, but it did. Though, let's just say it's the first time in years I've actually broken down and cried. In my mom's, show, in my mom's arms, I've cried. First time in years. So, let's just... That's all the more I really want to talk about that. But anyway, uh, that was my week. Uh, today went pretty well. 
Uh, I got to enjoy some peace and quiet for the most part. Uh, otherwise, yeah, today went fairly well. Not exactly uh, a stressful day. I'm happy. But let's just get into the podcast because I really want to get into this. I'm saving my coup de gras uh, for near the end because I really want you all to stay with me for a moment. So let's go in reverse order. The Hokua cast, the dub cast, um, has been previewed. The 2012 series is finally arriving this July uh, in the U.S. U.S. dub. Thank you, Funimation. You screw up Case Closed by not finishing it, but giving us movies with a character that never appeared in the series. But I trust you can't screw this up. I mean that. I trust that you just can't screw this up. Somehow, I trust you can't screw this up. Um, but anyway, the English dub cast has been uh, previewed. I have to admit, I'm kind of happy with them. The only one that I kind of feel on the fence about is uh, Chitanda, because the voice just seems a little too young for the character, but... It's one of those, I can learn to live with it. Because it's not as bad as Asuno and Kirito uh, from SAO. That is the last dub that I tried to watch that I saw the whole series subbed. And when it came out, my one friend and I that were watching this, I go, the English voice actors suck for this. And he goes, yeah, we royally screwed up picking them. The U we, the U.S., really screwed up picking them. And I agreed. The characters, uh, cause, uh, Kirito's voice sounded a little older for what he was supposed to be. Asuna sounded a little too older for who she was supposed to be. The, 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 the voices just didn't fit the body, basically. It didn't fit the character. So, this one, though, for Hakua, the characters fit. Uh, the one that they have playing, uh... Satoshi actually feels like that's who the character is. And that's Dallas Reed, by the way, who's who's voicing uh, Satoshi. Uh, the one who's voicing Iru is uh, Madeline Morris. Adam Gibbs has the honor of playing uh, Oraki. Way to go. And rounding out the four main characters of Mayaka is Jill Harris. So I'm really looking forward to this. And I like how the article... Had the characters... Now, if you've ever seen the series, and spoiler alert if you haven't, but the characters kind of fall in love with each other. You have uh, Oraki likes, but doesn't want to admit he likes Iru, and she likes him, but doesn't want to admit it. Then you have Satoshi and Mayako, who basically have been in love with each other since the 8th grade, but don't want to openly express it because, as he put it in one episode... A, computer, a database can draw no conclusions. And he was just afraid that he couldn't give her what she wanted. At least that's what I gathered from it. I could be wrong, but either way, it's uh, really great. Those are the main cast. Again, that's Adam Gibbs, uh, Madeline Morris, Dallas Reed, and Jill Harris. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, the supporting cast uh, is going to be for uh, Oraki's older sister, for Hatro's uh, older sister, it's going to be uh, Caitlin Glass. Uh, Linda Young will be playing in this as well. will be voicing uh, Miss Ito Itogawa. Uh, Fumi Isaru will be voiced by Alexis Tipton. Uh, Sarah Weidenheft, and I apologize if I mispronounce that, will be playing uh, Sawa Kawaguchi. Or Sawa Kagu Sawa Kaguchi. I apologize for that. Uh, Kochi will be voiced by Brina... Plus, Xenia, I believe that's how it's pronounced. Again, I apologize. Uh, Tanabe will be voiced by Dave Torsko. And Yusa, voiced by Don M. Bennett. Uh, ADR directors will be for like 12, episode 1 through 12, the OVA. 18, 22, uh, Mike Fairland. Uh, then you're going to have 13 through 17 will be Chris George. And the ADR writer, uh, Emily Nerves. Bonnie and Bonnie Ching Chinkinbeard. 
And I do apologize for mispronouncing these. I thought my mom keeps saying she has a weird name. And people can't pronounce it. I mean, our neighbor calls her Mavis, which she responds to. You know, she responds to that. It's not Mavis, though, by the way. But <laughs> she responds to it. Um, you, there are people that were calling and mispronouncing it left and right. I know a few people have had weird names, even weird last names. So it's completely understandable. Hell, I can't even pronounce my one co-worker's last name, and he knows it. I just call him Tyler. By the way, hi, Tyler. Free shout-out for you, buddy. I just, that's why I just call him. I just call him by his first name because I can't pronounce his last name to save my ass. I really, I really can't pronounce it. But uh, anyway, uh, that was your cast. Uh, supporting cast and crew, the synopsis of this is, and I quote, a worthy addition to any animation fan's collection. And this came from an anime site, by the way. This came from Otaku USA. Um, Hakuna is a stunning masterwork that spins a charming tale of high school romance and mystery. After disenchanting student Hot. Hotaro Oraki joins his school's classic literature club. He meets Iru Chintada, a kind-hearted and inquisitive girl with boundless curiosity and a knack for getting him caught up in all sorts of trouble. God knows that's true. She constantly uses the phrase, I'm curious. Every time he hears those words, he knows it's trouble for him. <laughs> and I love every time she said that. Only once did he ever catch her off guard, but I don't want to uh, spoil that. But basically, after going unlicensed since, two th since its 2012 debut, for five years this thing was unlicensed, which is mind-boggling to me. If somebody could have licensed this and made a goddamn mint off of it. I swear. But then again, maybe this is a better time to license it because a lot of the good series that were out have definitely dropped off in popularity. A lot of them have finished up. I mean, we've gone through Tiger and Bunny. We've gone through uh, half a dozen other series. Uh, Death Note's long in the wind. And this is like a mystery style, so I had to go with ones like that. Uh, Case Closed is dead in the wind. Uh, Death Note's done. I'm not sure if a lot of other ones that are out, I'd have to, really have to double check. Um, Ace Attorney ended. But then again, that was dubbed. Uh, that was sub, not dubbed. I'd have to go with ones that are dubbed. So like I said, I really got to look at that. So I kind of think this might, uh, you know, hit. Uh, volume 1, which is the first collection, is due out on July 4th. Hey, 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 for 4th of July weekend. What better way than to binge watch an anime series that's finally getting to see the light of day in the U.S.? That's a great way to do it. Uh, and you can see a sample of the dub and cast and the listing below, which is basically everything that I read off. There is a trailer that you can pull up on YouTube. It's basically from, I want to say, episode two or... No, 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 episode one, episode one, episode one. Come on, brain, start thinking. It's episode one. It's the second half of episode one. It's still really good of a series. This definitely feels like it could be a good version of Case Closed. Um, a newer style of mystery animation, a mystery anime. I'm really looking forward to this. I cannot express how much I'm looking forward to this. In fact, if anybody out there from Funimation is listening to this, I would love a review copy. I will review the shit out of this for you. <laughs> I, I, I've seen, unless there's something on there that's going to royally piss me off, I've seen the series subbed. I would love to review the dub series. Anybody out there from Funimation's listening, but let's face it, I get like four views if I'm lucky a week. I know one of them is my mom, and that's usually about it. Uh, I know there may be some other ones, but I'm not 100% sure because some weeks it's only one view, and then it makes me feel really sad. But anyway, uh, yeah, so Hoku is dropping uh, this July on July 4th. First volume will be out. It's like, uh, I want to say like 22-ish episodes. Um, hold on, let me double check quick. Because I remember it, the opening changed halfway through. Uh, it was during the, or right, it was either right before or right after. I think it was right after the, um, oh God, what was, oh yeah, right after the school uh, festival. Okay. Kua. It was like right after the school festival is uh, when it changed. 
Okay. Come on, come on, come on. God dang, you're slow. Uh, let's see here. Ba 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 Originally published. Ba 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 Original network. I want an episode listing, not pictures. Come on. Oh, there you go. Wikipedia. Thank God for Wikipedia. I don't know what I would do if it wasn't for Wikipedia. <laughs> That's like the easiest place to get half the information. And for anime series, it's pretty much accurate because the people that put it up there are just literally taking it off of another site. It's really easy and it's scary. Okay, here we go. Okay, anime tele... Okay, it's 22 episodes long. That's what it was. So it's a 22-episode anime series. It's really not bad. I recommend it. It is definitely something that is well welcomed in any anime collector's collection. I mean, it's not something that I really would shake a stick at and say, no, I wouldn't get it. I recommend it. I highly do. If you like Case Clothes, you like Mysteries, I check it out. So it's coming out July 4th. And seriously, Funimation, I'll review a copy. Please? Okay, moving right along. Uh, let's talk about a topic. I know that I talked about this a few weeks ago. Uh, maybe at least a month or two ago. About uh, anime directors taking low wages. Like the low wages that are paid to the creators of anime series, to the drawers of manga, and stuff like that. And it's something that royally boiled my piss. It still does. I mean, they get paid less than I do, if you really think about it. And I get paid just a little bit above minimum wage for my state. So, I, get, I think I'm getting like 75 cents above my state's minimum wage. Oh, yeah, I am. I am. Because the minimum wage, yeah, I'm getting seven, Yeah, I'm getting 75 cents more than the minimum wage in my state. Although, if you ask some of my certain co-workers of mine, and they swear that it's uh, more than that, but it's not. I did look it up. It is very simple to look up. But, anyway, an anime director has detailed the low-wage woes. Uh, apparently, he was asked to take half of promised earnings. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so, the past few years, we've seen no shortage of folks from the anime industry taking to social media and giving us a glimpse inside the dark inner workings of the business. Whereas Bakuman gave us that beautiful light side of it of, oh yeah, they're making shit tons of cash. Just don't hurt your hands, but they make shit tons of cash. Uh, yeah, there's a dark side to this. There's always a dark side to everything. You get the yin and yang feature. I mean, it'd be great to work at Victoria's Secret, but if you're a guy, not so much. So they'll get, I don't know, but, you know, that, that's the only synopsis I can think of. Is that it's something that one person will find enjoying only to find out that it's not. Or better, I guess a better one would be uh, working at an amusement park but finding out you can't ride the rides. You know, something like that. I don't want, I don't mean to be like insensitive to anybody. I just try to come up with something that's easy for people to figure out when I say it. So there's that. So this is basically what it is. Uh, you can add director Taiki... Nishimura uh, to the list of anime making grievance errors. So this is basically ones that are airing the dirty laundry of the anime industry. And there's been no shortage of these lately. I mean, you can pretty much Google search it and you will find articles that will make your skin crawl. You will look up articles that will basically make you feel so sad for the Japanese people. You'll want to go out and do a Sarah McLaughlin commercial just to try to help them. I I'm dead serious on that. Again, I mean no disrespect, but I'm dead serious on that. That's how bad I felt after when I first reported on this, and I was talking about it a few months ago. That's how I felt, and I almost was tempted to do that, but I just didn't know how exactly to go about it. But uh, Nishimura, who is mainly known as an episode director, had uh, has helmed episodes of series such as Naruto, Mobile Suit Gundam Seed Destiny, which, by the way, really wasn't that great of a... Gundam franchise. Although some of the mobile suits in it were, weren't bad, the plot line really went nowhere. Uh, Metabots, which I love Metabots. I love Metabees. My favorite Metabot. And School Rumble. Never saw it. Uh, the director took to Twitter on April 29th to say the following. Recently, when it comes to gathering, when it comes to getting paid, I keep getting asked to wait. And when I do get paid, they ask for a 50% discount. When as director I ask for a retake, 
I get told it's not necessary. It's making me want to quit anime. Or at the very least, work with a reputable company. Oh, that's a bird right there, baby. Uh, so, basically, first of all, I would be pissed at this too. I mean, anybody that's working on something, I would hate when you're told, Hey, uh, by the way, where's my pay? Oh, yeah, you, you just got to wait like a week or two. We, we have a, like a bank error. We'll take care of it. You just got to wait like a week. We promise it'll be, we promise you'll get it. And then when you finally get paid, yeah, we're going to need like 50% of your pay back to us, though. See, we paid you too much. Are we going to need like 50% of it back? No. It's stuff like that that really would piss me off. Uh, the next day, Nishimura followed up uh, with a tweet that put a concrete number on things, saying that last year he made 1,600,000 yen. Now, before you start thinking, oh, well, that's not too bad, let's remember that there's an exchange rate between yen and U.S. dollars. So when it comes to U.S. dollars for an entire year, that's 365 days. Although last year was the, uh, well, the last year was a leap year, so 366 days, he made a whopping in U.S. dollars 14 grand, just about. With the current exchange rate, it's just about fourteen grand. That's a pretty far cry from one from a little over one point five billion one point five million yen. US dollars, fourteen grand, give or take. What? You know, you hear about low wages in anime, usually from in between or key frame animators. Or freelancers that basically get paid peanuts. Uh, they get paid uh, freelance or keyframe, sorry, keyframe animators uh, get paid per frame. And as Nishimura himself pointed out in his follow-up tweet, director's wages don't get nearly as much attention. But apparently folks like Nishimura aren't exactly living like kings either, which is really sad. So, I mean, can they at least afford their basic necessities? Can they afford food, electricity? Can they afford a roof over their heads? Because if they can't, then I think there's a major problem. And I can hear a lot of people out there going, well, it's the piracy sites. You have all those piracy sites. You have, like, Kiss Anime. And you have, like, all those other ones. But a lot of those torrent sites just got shut down uh, during the week, if not, like, last week, because there was an Answer Man uh, article I saw on Facebook. Didn't read the whole thing. I didn't have enough time to. But I did see that about how a tremendous amount of torrent sites were shut down. Especially the granddaddy of them all that everybody else kind of suckled the teat off of. Getting the stuff anyway. But that one shut down. So then all you basically have to bitch about is all the pirate sites, as people put it. But what's funny is that they consider them pirate sites, yet if you actually look some of them up, they're not technically pirate sites. They're streaming sites. Now, okay, they keep saying Kiss Anime. I I'm not getting into any of them. I know Kiss Anime is constantly one on that list because they have constantly bitched about wanting to shut down. There's uh, at least six or seven Change.org petitions for it. There's uh, a couple on an anime forum that people, every time you visit or even just click onto the forum, they instantly want you to sign this petition. Regardless if you signed it already, they want you to sign it again. And it's basically... Uh, but a lot of it's basically okay. That's one, although how valid that topic is is up for debate. I'm not getting into it. But you have some that, if you really sit down and look at them, there's nothing but streaming sites. And then you can also say the same thing then about Crunchyroll or any of the, you know, heavy hitters like Funimation, Viz that have their own channels and their own, you know, streaming sites. Well, they're taking the money out of their out of the mouths because the people aren't p really paying to watch those. Crunchyroll, you can watch it for free. You just got to wait a week. You can still watch it for free. So where exactly are they getting the money from that? Even the legitimate ones are robbing them blind. I mean, you can complain about it all you want. I mean, go to town on it. I don't care. But at the end of the day, you're just as guilty as they are. You know, the legitimate sites will say, well, we're doing it legitimately. Yeah, but you're still just as guilty as the illegitimate ones.
because you're still taking the money out of their mouths. If they can't afford to pay for their own, you know, pay for the food that they need to eat to survive, pay to keep a roof over their heads so they have shelter from the elements, pay, you know, to be able to see at night so they don't get hurt. You're just as guilty and as wrong as those that are basically going around and you're accusing of freely stealing it. Who cares? You're still just as guilty. Well, we pay for it. Congratulations! Well, we charge a service each month, a fee, and you can watch it the same day. Or you can just wait a goddamn week or 11 days or however long the time lock is on it and just watch it for free. You're still just as guilty. Regardless, you're just charging people to watch it sooner, but you're still just as guilty. Because 90% of that money goes to pay the server fees, the hosting fees, everything else that you, the cost that you, the site, inquire is what those fees go to pay. I don't see a cent of that ever. And if it is a cent, it's probably one cent making it to the actual, you know, creator. So that kind of really bothers me. Of course, then you also have the DVD sales, any like uh, manga series, because most of them were manga to begin with. So you have those sales to back on, you know, to fall back on any merchandising sales. So a lot of that stuff does help in the long run. But still, as far as the anime industry is concerned, it really is sad that they're getting paid peanuts to produce wonderful artworks. And things that just, you know, give me hope and joy inside. It just bothers me. Speaking of anime, Hayao Miyazaki. We all remember him, the man that refuses to retire. <laughs> I mean, this. I mean, he said he's going to retire, then he comes out of retirement. Then he retires and he comes out of retirement. The man is like a boomerang. He changes his mind more than I change underwear. Seriously. Um, <clears throat> anyway, his latest feature, the short that he's been working on, Burrow the Caterpillar. Sounds like the name of a child's book, but so whatever. <laughs> it's uh, going to premiere in July, and it's going to get a separate full-length film, which is set to premiere after 2019. So you got to wait two years to see a full-length feature of Burrow the Caterpillar after it premieres in July of this year. So this came out uh, last weekend, posted up last Sunday. At this weekend's Noikon, no, Nikon Eco, I do apologize, my mind and I are not in sync today anymore, uh, Chokagi convention in Chiba, Studio Ghibli producer Toshi, huh, Toshio Suzuki dropped a couple of Hayao Miyazaki knowledge bombs. One good, the other not so much. Uh, the first good one was, like I said, Burrow the Caterpillar, which was announced to, back in 2015. Let's remember that for a moment. All the way back in 2015. Let's get the DeLorean. We're going back to the past. We're going back to the past. Let's get Marty in the dock. Let's go back to the past. Back to 2015. We'll be descending into Hill Valley, October 21st, 2015, where nothing in that movie ever happened. But I'm getting off topic on that. Um, it'll be premiering, uh, World of the Caterpillar will be premiering at the Ghibli Museum in Mitaka, Tokyo this July. So it took it two years to make, which is really, that's understandable. It's a short movie. You want to make sure you get it right. You got to do the artwork for you. There's a lot of steps into this. I remember... Uh, my one art class in elementary school, we had an assignment where it was going to be part of this whole massive uh, thing for an art show that the school was having. Uh, mine sadly didn't get to be up due to an in due to an issue. Uh, it was a technical issue. <clears throat> That's all I'm going to say on that. But anyway, um, so there was that. But. So the short, which is Miyazaki, uh, which Miyazaki created, the short uh, was CG animator Yun uh, Yuhi Sakuragi. <laughs> there you go. 
The case of Hannah and Alice in Neon Genesis Impact. Impacts, wow. Okay, I never heard of either of those. Uh, will most likely be exclusive to the museum. Meaning a trip to Tokyo will be the only way to see it. <laughs> yeah, all right. So, and I want to say this, I know this will be true. There will be a Japanese group of people. A group of Japanese people will have recordings on phones or some other movie stealing device and that baby will be out on YouTube in a matter of minutes and then it will be downloaded by several thousand people across the globe in a matter of seconds and then it will be re-uploaded half a dozen times within a matter of days and they will copyright strike the hell out of it and then it will come back up and be copyrighted again. But either way, the world will see it. You won't have to go to Tokyo. The world will see it somehow. Unless they ban phones in there, the world will see it. I'm sorry to break it to you, but the world will see it. But the not-so-good news dropped uh, by Suzuki. Work on Miyazaki's new full-length feature film is progressing slowly. And I thought it was like going to be uh, another Burrow the Capital thing. I might be wrong. I'm hoping I'm wrong because I really don't see that being a full-length feature. But it's progressing slowly. No shit. Uh, meaning it won't make the originally anticipated 2019 release date. Well, no, not if you're working on Burrow the Caterpillar. I mean, what's the story of Burrow the Caterpillar? Is Burrow the Caterpillar going to turn into Burrow the Butterfly? I don't mean to sound... I don't mean to react to this with the jawbone of an ass, but seriously, that sounds like a kid's book. That sounds like a book I would find in an elementary school library checked out half a dozen times by an, uh, by a kindergartner. Burrow the Caterpillar. Burrow the Caterpillar was a tiny little caterpillar. Burrow the Caterpillar kept... Burrow tried to eat tremendous amounts of leaves, hoping to one day be strong and beautiful like the butterflies he constantly saw. I could just see that. As a child's book... An animated short? Yeah, sure. What the hell? CG while we're at it? Go for it. <laughs> it's a kid's book. It's what it sounds like. I mean, no disrespect to uh, to you either, Miyazaki. I really mean no disrespect to you. But seriously, Boro the Caterpillar. The name just sounds like a kid's book. It really does. Uh, but anyway, in fact, uh, uh, Shizuki uh, denied... The 2019 day came from Ghibli at all, saying it was something somebody just made up. So, in other words, a bunch of people were sitting around a water cooler, and they said, uh, so, uh, when's the new movie gonna come out? Ah, 2019. It won't take them too long to make Bro the Caterpillar. It's just gonna be, like, a really short film. We can bust that thing out in, like, two weeks, maybe a month and a half, tops. Yeah, well, this thing will be out by 2019. Now, what are you doing? Oh, I'm just tweeting 2019 release date. Okay, not a problem. Okay, next. <laughs> I mean, that's probably what it was, and it just leaked out. Uh, Suzuki didn't comment on whether on when the film will be released or the title, but did reveal that Miyazaki has drawn about 20 minutes worth of storyboards. Cool! So let's see. A feature-length film is usually about... An hour and a half to two hours. So you got 20 minutes worth of storyboards. So I don't see you stretching that out to an hour and 45 minutes there, Hayo. Uh, no, don't mean to be disrespectful on that. Uh, while those of us in Tokyo will get some Boro goodness this July. <laughs> oh, God, please help me with that. Uh, it may be some time until the world at large gets to see anything new from Miyazaki. Until then, we'll just have to satisfy ourselves with this video of Suzuki painting a giant cootie shot. Uh, which really wasn't that great, by the way. You can find that on uh, Anime News Network, by the way. Or no, I'll take... Well, either way, I know it was up on that one, too. Uh, definitely up on Otaku USA if you want to watch the video. Check out their news feed. Like I said, really wasn't that great. So, i still telling you that people will have this Burrow the Caterpillar will be freaking... I, I guarantee it. 
And it will be like uh, movie raped where you basically, they're going to have uh, cell phone cameras in there just completely going to town recording that thing. I mean, they do that at movies. I guarantee you somebody has already did that to uh, the new Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Without a doubt, I guarantee you someone did that day one. And then they're going to make half a dozen copies on DVD-Rs. And they're going to mass produce those things behind barber shops or at yard sales and flea markets for months to come. They're going to bootleg the hell out of that thing. Because you're going to have the dumb schmucks that are going to be stupid enough to buy it. And what did it cost them? Like 10 to 13 bucks for a ticket and maybe something to drink. As they sat there with their phone and recorded the whole damn thing. I think... Movie theaters should have a policy of where you don't allow, quote unquote, the, um, what's the word I'm looking for here? Oh, yes. You don't allow cell phones in there at all. You got to check your cell phone at the door, prove that you shut it off, or just have something in there that dampens, like a dampening field or some type of thing. I know they sell them because a lot of bank robbers use them. So you know that they're available. And have it so that no calls can come in. So that the cell phones basically function no more than just over glorified clocks. Uh, maybe the museum will do something like that. Maybe they'll have everybody check their cell phone at the door. Or have security guards stand there and shut them off. But you know they're just going to turn them back on then anyway. I mean, seriously. It's really nothing that's going to stop them from that. So that Burrow the Caterpillar short film is going to pretty much be out on the internet. Within like a hell within a couple hours of its release I guarantee you it will be uploaded to YouTube or uploaded to Daily Motion or uploaded to Twitter half a dozen sites oh, probably not Twitter so you gotta have like a two minute video on there but half a dozen sites are gonna have that within a matter of hours and then it's just gonna go viral from there so I mean, you never piss off anime nerds and that's the reason why they will basically take all your shit and just run with it all right, all right, all right. I know you've been waiting. You've been patient. And I have to admit, I'm thankful for that. So, who out there knows about Pixar? That wonderful studio that has Luxo. Their lovely mascot that keeps jumping and murdering the eye. Yeah, it's true. Well, who out there likes cars? Well, if you do, a Pixar director just confirmed a Dark Cars fan theory. And oh boy, does it make me never want to watch any of those movies again. And the third one's just coming out, too. And I never want to see those things again. This is creepy. But Cars is the most lucrative Pixar franchise that everyone seems to hate. Hell, I love Toy Story more than I love Cars. I love the worst thing I think Pixar's ever done more than Cars. I can't even think of what it is anymore. Uh, on the surface, it's just a fun world filled with vehicles that talk like Owen Wilson and Tony Shalhoub. But the moment you start to pick apart the particulars, the series suddenly becomes a pitch black tale of technology gone wrong. Welcome to the Twilight Zone from hell, boys and girls. We're about to get really, really screwed up mentally. I hope you have your therapy doll. Hope you have your Play-Doh and your coloring books. Because we're about to wreck your childhood a bit. So, anyway, the most burning question, where are all the humans? The entire world of cars seems to be Earth. There are landmarks like London's Big Ben. Uh, the American flag has been seen at one point. I know that there were half a dozen landmarks in the first movie alone. Hell, Route 66 is an American landmark. And they basically showed it on that in that movie at least three times. So, where are the humans in this? Conspiracy theorists, which I have to admit, I love conspiracy theorists to a point. Some of their stuff's a little out there, but some of it's just so damn funny, I have to laugh. Um, so conspiracy theorists have speculated that Cars is set in a universe where vehicles overthrew mankind. We got some Terminator shit going on in here. Uh, that there was an uprising and no humans were spared. 
They were all killed by Priuses, apparently, I guess. I don't know. That's what their theory is. Um, the real the really scary part though, a big wig at Pixar has just confirmed that exact scenario occurred. Now I don't know if it has to do with Priuses killing everybody. I'm assuming it was probably Hummers. <laughs> I mean, they can run over and mow down half a dozen people. It's Death Race 2000 in a kid's movie. <laughs> hey, look, I just got 90 points for running over a family of seven. That's just creepy, but it's it's going to get worse, folks. I swear it's going to get worse. Uh, in a fantastic article for Screen Crush, writer Matt Singer chatted with Pixar's Jay Ward. Or Jay Ward. Ward. Can't talk today either. The creative director of the Cars franchise. When I say Ward wrote the book on Cars, I mean he literally wrote an internal document for Pixar establishing the rules of the characters in the Cars universe. What, the characters must talk like Owen Wilson and Tony Shalhoub? They must have personalities that do not match them? Or you have to say that Mater has to say Gator done half a dozen times. And I'm hoping now I don't have to pay Larry the Cable Guy any royalties. Come on, I was using it. Uh, let's see. Use as an example. There you go. Use as an example. So, it's just going to get worse. When asked about the fate of humanity in a world where automobiles are the dominant life form... Ward said this, if you think about this, we have autonomous car technology coming in right now. It's getting to the point where you can just sit back in the car and it drives itself. When the hell did we hit that point? We got Knight Rider cars and I missed it? Man, I want me a kit Knight Rider car. I can just sit back at three in the morning, or three or four in the morning when I'm going to work, and I can just have the car drive me. I can sleep. Holy crap, that'd be great. I can sleep on the ride home too. Wow. Oh God. But getting back to this though, uh, imagine in the near future when the cars keep getting smarter and smarter, and after one day they just go, "Why do we need human beings anymore? They're just slowing us down." It's just extra weight. Let's get rid of them. So the guy in charge of the Cars movie just acknowledged that prior to the events of the series, a massive uprising took place that resulted in the murder of every single human being on the planet. That's right. So in other words, every single human being, you, your grandma, your grandma's grandma, if she was still alive, you know, that hot neighbor down the street, the guy at the bakery, your favorite convenience store clerk, they're all dirt meat. They're worm chow at this point. Holy crap. If the movies were honest, they'd start with a prologue. Where killbot cars roll over piles of human skulls. Like the beginning of Terminator 2. No! I don't want Terminator Owen Wilson following me. That'd be creepy. I don't want to hear Mater yell his catchphrase while trying to hook my brains out with his tow cable. No! They were tippy tractors in that movie for fun. I don't want to be part of that. Now, to be fair, Pixar itself, though, isn't endorsing this theory, which is a damn good thing. You want to sell this movie to kids. You don't want their parents to go, oh, my God, that's the death movie. That's the movie where the, the cars have murdered people. That's how there's no humans in there. No, 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 no. No, we're not taking them to see that. What? That thing is dark and gory. What's a nicer... If they want to see something gory, what's a nicer R-rated movie we can drag them to go see? We'll be with them. We can explain what happened. They won't freak out. Nothing? Oh, God. I'm not taking them to go see this. But it just gets worse and worse and worse. So while Pixar itself isn't endorsing this, uh, only Jay Ward, uh, he's still the guy in charge of everything to do with cars. So it's not like there's any higher authority that could speak on the subject. It's not like a Pixar executive can go, whoa, 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 we do not condone this. No, 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 no. Jay Warp, no, no, no. He's been smoking a little too much weed. 
Had a little too much to drink one night before he did that interview. No, 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 no. There is nothing wrong with the Cars universe. Nothing bad has been happening. There was no uprising, no death to humans. No, 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 no. Jay Ward is basically the god of Cars. So there's nobody higher than him. Yeah, this is not going to end well. Uh, the Screen Crush article also has some other juicy and or disturbing tidbits concerning the car's cannon. Like, why does a sentient pickup truck look like, sound like a redneck? Well, Ward explained that too. But the car takes on the personality of the last person who drove it. So there you go. So we got, um... A massive uprising of the machines. We got Terminator 2 and Skynet style shit going on here in the form of cars and sentient cars murdering people. And then, because they need personalities to interact with one another, because beeps and boops only get you so goddamn far, they decide to take on the personality of the last person that drove it. I would hate for it to be the last memory of the person that drove it. I can just see that now. Please don't kill me. I will. I promise I will be good. I will bow down to my new car overlords. Please don't. Ah! That could be the bad part of this. And it just scares the shit out of me that this is true. But I take on the personality of the last person who drove it. So not only did vehicles destroy humanity, they also replaced it. Millions, maybe billions of cars all over the globe absorbed the traits and quirks of people who would soon die in the car apocalypse. So I guess you were a lucky select few if you were chosen to mate with the car, where it would absorb your personality, your idioms, and your way of life. Where you starved to death inside of it, unless you just... Unless they just basically opened up the vents and shot the exhaust back in. Then you only had about maybe six minutes at best. And then you were dead. And then it just absorbed you. It's like, we're going to become one now. You and I were always great. We always went to car shows together. You always took me for rides on Sundays. We had a great time together, didn't we? I'm going to absorb you now and become you. We're going to meld together and be one forever. Um, wait, what? Uh, hey, hey, the door's locked. Um, um, the door's locked. Um, huh, hey, there's some weird fumes coming through the vents. Um, what, what, what's going on? What's your favorite radio station? You play it all the time. It's number one on the dial. It's, you know, it's number one. I'm going to let you have a pleasant memory before you die. Before I what now? Oh, no. That's, that's basically what this means. And it scares the crap out of me on this. So, even if you move past the creepy, soul-sucking nature of these cute little money makers, which they ain't making that much money now anymore. I don't want anything to do with this movie anymore. I don't even want to watch it now when it's on TV. I am now going to be having nightmares of these little car creatures for the next six millennia to come. Um, but there's always a question of biology. If the car's eyes are the windshield... And the mouth is the bumper. Where is everything else? Well, Ward clarified this as well. But his explanation of the rules only brought up more questions. <laughs> oh, God. There's more. I, I, I need a sip of my Dr. Pepper before I continue. I'm getting scared now. Okay. I'm better now. Let's get into this. You'll never see the doors open, Ward was quoted saying. Because the brain and the eyes are in there. We don't want anything falling out of the side. There are some things that we weren't meant to, to, to contemplate. And one of those things is the internal organs of a cartoon car unfurling out of an open passenger side door. Yep. I'll agree to that. We got the murderous car. The last thing I need to see is a brain oozing out of the side because I opened up the door to try to free the poor bastard that was I thought was trapped in there. 
only to find out that they've basically been absorbed. Their head's nothing but a big brain. Their eyes are where the windshield is. And, nope. 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 This is creepy enough. I never want to see this movie now. The third one's coming out, and I'm not going to go in at all to see it. Now, whether or not this is true or not, let's just face it. The fan theory at the... One of the people at Pixar that's in charge of this movie confirms it. Even as a joke, you basically freaked out half a dozen people. I'm afraid to get into my car now that I have to drive. I'm afraid to get into that. God knows when this uprising is going to be. I mean, is super smart technology going to be implanted into it by another car while I'm not looking? And then all of a sudden, I'm going to get in there one morning and go, and I don't really want to go to work today. All of a sudden, the radio comes on. I'm glad you said that. And then, because there's no power locks on this car, so I'm just trying to figure out how it's going to lock the doors. Oh, never mind. It's going to end up upgrading itself. That's how it'll do it. It'll upgrade itself. I'll go, huh, when did the doors become power lock doors? Um... Hi, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you just fine. It'll talk like Bumblebee, and I'll get really scared. And I'm going to go, what? what's happening? <laughs> please, please, no. It's going to be the last thing I remember, and I'm not going to enjoy that. So thank you, conspiracy theorists of cars, for now giving me nightmares for the next six millennia to come. God bless you, bastards. And that's going to do it for the absolutely completely random podcast this week, folks. But before I go, I got one more fact for you. Uh, these facts are courtesy of Trivia Question of the Day. Really great site that gives you two trivia questions each day. And you don't get any prizes in it other than knowledge, other than the feeling of knowing that you know knowledge. So, earlier this week, one of the questions was about Apple. That's right, Apple. Let's all remember that for a moment. The late Steve Jobs had Apple. That's where he started with Steve Wozniak and apparently Ronald Gerald. Ronald Gerald Wayne co-founded Apple Computer with Steve Wozniak and Steve Jobs. Wayne worked with Steve Jobs at Atari before he, Jobs, and Wozniak founded Apple Computer on April 1st, 1976. Serving as the venture's adult supervision, Wayne drew the first Apple logo, wrote the three men's original partnership agreement, and wrote the Apple One manual. He soon, however, sold his share of of the new company for a mere $800. As of March 2017, though, if Wayne had kept his 10% stake in Apple, it would have been worth over $75.5 billion. That's right. Billion. Ho, oh, ho, didn't know that, did you? Uh, here's something else you didn't know. If you use iTunes, you've already agreed not to use Apple products to create nuclear weapons. That's why you always got to read those terms of service agreements. I swear there's a line in those somewhere that probably says something about you give us your firstborn. We have the right to experiment on you. It's going to be human sentai pass, and They're going to call that shit in. You know it. They're going to call that shit in, man. All right, but that's going to do it, though, this week for the Absolutely Completely Random Podcast. I will be back next week with a whole bunch of topics. I am working on a couple more Andrew Rance videos. I know I had a good one uh, for last week, Then the more I thought about it, the more I changed my mind on it. Because it was good, but then the more I thought about it, I'm like, eh, I'll be milking the crap out of it, and I didn't feel like it. Plus, then I forgot what it was, so that... I mean, after I'm thinking about it and I had it written down, I'm like, eh, maybe. And then at some point during the night, I lost a piece of paper. I kicked it and moved it or it blew somewhere and I can't find it. So that's a sign, I guess. But anyway, uh, I will plan to be back next week for the next podcast. There is another Andrew Rance video coming out uh, sometime this week. I'm going to work on it. I am working on another Andrew Reviews video. That's right, I am planning to review something special. Ooh. You'll have to wait and find out what it is. 
But otherwise, if you'd like to give any topics for the podcast, if you don't think I'm talking about something that interests you, well, then feel free to tell me. Send me a topic and I'll talk about it. Just nothing political. I refuse to touch that crap. Anyway, just send me a topic request, what you want me to talk about, to acrpodcast at gmail.com. You can also tweet one to me at Otaku Roads on Twitter. If you have any suggestions on ways I can improve upon the podcast, and I mean improve upon it, I am working on a new logo. I just have not decided if I actually want to pay somebody to do it or if I want to do it myself. I'm kind of leaning towards doing it myself and saving the money in the long run. But at the same time, I did the first one, and that's eh, not exactly been going over too well. So anyway, well, there is that. But if you have any ideas for things I can improve upon the podcast with, uh, feel free to send them to acrpodcast at gmail.com. I would say if you want to sponsor, but let's face it, I get like four views a week, so I'm not really a safe bet right now. But if you, you know, just want to say hi or you want to send fan mail, send it to acrpodcast at gmail.com. Please keep in mind that it will automatically filter out any spam and anything with any attachments. I'm not that stupid and neither is Gmail. (laughs) Nice try, people. And anyway, until the next time, ladies and gentlemen, I have been Andrew Rhodes. I am now going to... Oh, what what the hell is that? The hell? A DeLorean? Oh, sweet. Andrew, you've got to come back with me. Wait, Professor Klump? No, it's Dr. Emmett Brown. Oh, really? I don't know. Partially. The future's a mess. You've got to come back with me and fix it. Sweet. All right, folks, I'll see you next week. I gotta go fix the future. Bye, everybody, and have a wonderful weekend. Let's roll, Doc. Get that thing up to 88.